diamond, foul lines, and three outs to a side. Those were the rules when New Yorker Alexander Cartwright invented baseball in 1845. In 1868, the game was first openly played for money, and professional baseball was born. It was wildly successful from the start. It was a game of giants, and the great of the land came to cheer them on. So did the bands of the land. And the young of the land. Within a lifespan, it became America's national game. That's how professional baseball grew from its start 100 years ago. Play ball! 101 years later, two historic incidents took place. On April 8th in New York, the first international major league game in history was held. And on April 14, 30,000 Montreal fans jammed into Jari Park to see the first official major league game ever played in Canada. Even in his wildest dreams, Alexander Cartwright could never have predicted the Montreal Expos. Rookie Dave Hartman knows it isn't easy to be big league, and he's right. One afternoon, I was at my apartment, and uh, I got a letter in the mail, and it was marked uh, Montreal, and I had no idea of anything like that, and my wife and I opened it up, and I was, it said that I had been drafted eighth by the uh, Montreal Expos, and I read it once, and I read it twice, and I read it again, and then my wife read it. And I think that night my wife and I went out and celebrated. We must have had a hamburger or something, because that was something big for me, you know, and I couldn't... She says, well, what does it feel like? And I says, honey, I just don't know, because, I, you know, this is something new for me, too. And all, all winter I thought about it, and nat naturally one, one day I'm dreaming about thrown in a big game, and the next day I figure, well, I probably won't make it, and up and down, and up and down, I win. The monumental job of building a major league team was exhausting and exasperating. At times, it looked as though there was no hope at all, that it was all a crazy, impossible dream. But it wasn't. des voeux de succès à l'équipe. Je sais que tous nos concitoyens ont un esprit sportif assez grand pour savoir que ce qui compte pour le moment, c'est de savoir, d'avoir cette satisfaction, de savoir que tous les plus grands joueurs de baseball au monde viendront jouer à Montréal. The impossible dream came true, personified in a proud symbol that would soon be familiar from coast to coast in two great countries. I believe that the expansion into Canada uh, by the National League was very much prompted by the exciting aspect of taking baseball, Major League Baseball, out of the United States for the first time and bringing in a new element Along with the valuable National League franchise came an even more valuable property for the Expos, President John McHale. It has a new dimension in sports. It has uh, international flavor. It's bringing uh, a game that uh, the Americans for so many years have uh, held very close to themselves, uh, something that's almost a religion in some areas, and bringing it to a, a, new, uh, a, a new area, a great, com a great country. But there were still miracles to be performed. A big league club needs a big league stadium. 
And that's what Montreal had promised the National League. After long searching, the Expos contracted for the operation of Jarry Park in Montreal's North End. And the critical question on everybody's lips was, how could a 3,000-seat minor league park be turned into a major league stadium in just a few months? It was a job that should normally take two years. I'm very glad to work on that job to prepare a good, good stadium for the baseball in Montreal because it's very important for us to get a good team over here and should be a good uh, business for the, all the people of Montreal. I've been here since we uh, started the uh, stadium, of course, and uh, we've suffered very much of winter, especially this winter here. And I think I will never forget about the Expos coming in Montreal. When, uh, when, when the first game is come, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to see that. Night and day, the city and the club labored to do the impossible and to put into operation what has been called the most fantastic sports enterprise in Canadian history. believe it, was Gene Kirby. I've seen many great uh, moments in baseball during a, a career that has extended over 25 years. I've seen some of the greatest names in baseball perform. Uh, Joe DiMaggio. I even go back to the days of my youth when Babe Ruth and Tris Speaker and Ty Cobb were at the end of their career, and it was a great thrill to see them. But uh, since the start of uh, baseball in Montreal this past year, I don't think anything has given me a greater thrill than to see a team start as this has up in Montreal and the enthusiasm that has been displayed by the people in Montreal toward this new baseball uh, enterprise or franchise is just uh, about the most outstanding thing that I have ever seen. Coming home to Montreal for their very first time, the Expos were surprised by a reception at the airport from 5,000 people. But Montreal wasn't surprised. Everyone felt the same as René Le Cavalier, popular Canadian sportscaster. Most of us baseball fans in Montreal had always hoped that eventually Major League Baseball would come to Montreal, but I frankly never thought it would happen in my generation. You see, as a youngster, I remember my family would go to the country for the weekends, and I would always stay behind in order not to miss a baseball game of the Montreal Royals. I'm sure baseball will achieve tremendous success in Montreal because there's great enthusiasm. And to use an expression of John McHale, when I asked him yesterday what he would like to accomplish in his first year in Montreal, he said, what we would like to see the fans do, and at least we'd like to see the fans feel, that this is their team. We'd like to see them live and uh, enjoy their success. We'd like to see them be disappointed with them, but be uh, patient that this is a new team, a new organization, and that uh, they will have uh, great uh, fun and uh, watching this uh, organization grow. Does Montreal love the Expos? How's this for a welcome home parade? In the middle of a normal working day, too. I think it's going to be like a new marriage, where both parties have to get to know each other and learn to live with each other's flaws and character. In Canada, we all the boys play baseball, uh, at least some. But we don't really know much about Major League Baseball. We don't know much about the finesse of the game, the finer points. And manager Gene Mock is going to be, have to be very patient with the members of press, radio, and television, fellows like me, who go to the dressing room after the game and ask what probably will be a lot of stupid questions. The same thing is true for the fans. We know about three strikes and three outs per inning. But do the fans really know about Major League Baseball? Do they know 
how hard some of these young fellows are going to be trying and how nervous the younger fellows on the team are going to be, especially trying so hard in a new expansion city. It's going to take a lot of learning to live together, but it's going to be great. players are the great artists. They are the people who produce the thrills. Uh, and uh, the fans are those who demand these uh, sort of thrills and uh, this sort of interest. Without them, we can't exist. And they're, uh, they're just a, a wonderful fandom here in uh, Montreal and Canada. There's uh, an emotion about uh, the way they uh, accept things and take things. And they seem to be so appreciative of, uh, of effort. And I think that uh, our team, if they uh, just give them uh, a good try, uh, an effort, an all-out effort to, uh, to, uh, to be a good ball club, and I think they're going to enjoy playing here tremendously. I think that the people of Montreal and Canada are going to be with us like the people in Green Bay uh, with the Packers. I think it's going to be that type of uh, association. And this will be great because we will be part of you and you will be part of us, which is fantastic. I think some of the most enthusiastic fans I've ever seen in my life uh, live in the city of Montreal. I remember 25 years ago when I played up there, it was commonplace on a Sunday to have uh, 15, 18, 20,000 people in the stands for minor league baseball. If we were playing uh, Toronto or Syracuse or Buffalo or some cities like that, and it was commonplace. The people were very avid, very rabid, enjoyed the game very much, and they let you know how, <laughs> how they felt about you. Montreal was uh, known as one of the best minor league baseball towns by the past, and I'm sure today, with people like uh, John McKay, Jim Fanning, and Gene Mock as head of our ball club, the Expo will succeed, and the Canadians across the country will encourage that, mer that uh, good sport is baseball. At last, the great day arrived. The stadium was ready. The people were ready. And even though word had it that Montreal and Jarry Park would still be under snow on opening day, Nobody in Montreal believed it. They knew, despite what anybody else said, that they had a stadium, a team, and a dream. The fans of Montreal will definitely have a, an effect on the ball club. I, I'm sure that Everybody on the club, uh, when we get there in Montreal, there's going to be a, a tremendous amount of excitement about the team. And uh, the whole idea of uh, a ball club is, is to have this excitement, you know, so you can naturally draw the fans into the stands. I think if the people of Montreal can, you know, just envision what could take place with a, with a team there, if it, if it is successful, and they can realize the capabilities of what should take place with an expansion ball club in our case, uh, they will not be disappointed in the caliber of play because I think they're going to get real good baseball. And uh, this is what the, the city wanted. They wanted good baseball, and they're going to get it. Now there were no more doubts. Everybody knew that big league baseball was in Montreal to stay. The Expos were playing ball, and the overflow crowd would never forget it as their team brought them to their feet in excitement. When we play in Montreal, we just hope that the people are going to be pulling for us as much as we're pulling for ourselves, and I, and I believe this is going to be true. Everything chips in to help a little bit. Good spirit from the fans, good spirit on the field from the ball players. Uh, winning a few games, of course, helps. Uh, of course, good uh, coaching helps, and we've got it here. We've got the best that there is in baseball right here in Montreal. You were a left-handed oh. left outfielder going to his left like this and have to turn like this to throw. Heck, yeah. that's good for two steps. That's good for two steps. Yeah, a lot of gym. I do it twice in my game. But men like manager Gene Mock are realistic about the job of building a real contender. 
Starting a ball club from scratch is really probably the most exciting thing that I've ever been uh, associated with. Uh, there, has some, there are some benefits to it. There are some disadvantages also. But I think uh, the benefits will outweigh any disadvantages you have because so many times when you start a new ball club, you can uh, create the style of play, the, the team policy that you want. You don't have to undo anything and like when you come into a, to an established club uh, that has been lethargic and apathetic in their play then you have to undo some of their bad habits we'll be starting right from scratch and do things the same way uh, year after year and i think that uh, the players will like the expo style of play 160 games still lay ahead of them but none meant as much to the expos as this one the opening day game in their own ballpark against 1968's National League champions, the St. Louis Cardinals. And that day, the most loyal fans in the league were born as the Expos won the first Major League contest ever held on Canadian soil. The score, eight to seven. Aside from the excitement, the tremendous excitement, the enthusiasm, we have a baseball player. The greatest of opportunities will be afforded to players made available by expansion who have been running second fiddle, you may say, to the Ron Santos, to the Dow Maxvilles, to the star players in the National League. The opportunities that they've never had before, these young players. Day out, the first guy who even talked to me was Bob Bailey. And I read about him and my, I, I think I collected his baseball card. That's just, and now I'm sitting right next to him and, and I, I don't know, the, should I say, I collected your baseball cards because that doesn't sound the right thing, and, and yet I don't, want, I don't know what to talk about. Do I talk about family or do I talk about shop, you know? Are, are you supposed to sit in the clubhouse and talk baseball all the time? I don't, I don't know, and uh, pe people come up and they introduce, you know, and I, rec and I recognize the name, and I say, God, and then I walk in my locker, maybe five lockers away from Maury Wills, and last summer I was seeing Maury Wills on TV, and, Every young ball player wants to play in the major leagues, and the expansion club has been a, it's been a great thing. It's, uh, it's helped a lot of ball players get to the major leagues, whereas maybe before they wouldn't have been able to. Jim Williams, speaking for every ball player who has ever been invited to a big league training camp. I'm looking forward to this year with the Montreal Expos. I think uh, we're going to have a real fine ball club. And I think when fellows like Wills and, uh, and Rusty Staub and some of the fellows that have played for a few years in the major leagues are are out there that it helps the younger ball players perform a little bit better than maybe they would uh, at a minor league level. Like every other branch of the entertainment business, baseball depends upon its stars to attract fans. And one of the outstanding young players bagged by the Expos is Rusty Staub, Le Grand Orange. I don't care who you are in a, in a game type situation, I think there is a, a definite uh, anxiety or nervousness that you can either let it work for you or against you. And, and, uh, and I think one of the things that I have tried to teach my own self and my own hitting is that if you concentrate uh, so much on fundamentals that uh, you can regulate your mind to that fact, no matter what kind of situation it is in any game, that you can go up to the plate and, and still see, uh, think the same things that you would normally think uh, uh, even if it was, uh, you know, you were ahead by 10 runs and a guy was on third base, you know. Bob began the season auspiciously hitting Montreal's first home run before a stunned and silent New York crowd. But one homer does not a season make, and Le Grand Orange is veteran enough to understand. You have to look at it two ways. Realistically, you've got to say we're going to finish last in our division. Uh, if anybody looks at it any other way, they're just kidding somebody. Uh, but everything doesn't always happen realistically. You can't go by paper. Uh, we're liable to surprise uh, the entire National League. One way or another, this colorful Canadian team was to be full of surprises, beginning with their 11-10 victory in their very first game. Even the people who had hoped the most could hardly believe what they had seen. I'm trying to make the team. I'm trying to make it as a starting pitcher, as a matter of fact. And uh, I just think uh, that I'm going to have a very good opportunity, much better opportunity than I would have had, uh, let's say, had I been with the Cubs this spring. 
And other people could hardly believe it when Montreal came up with the season's first no-hit-no-run game from Bill Stoneman, whose expo cap and autograph ball now rest in the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. There is something, particularly with the Expo Ball Club, there's something extra special here. Uh, we have better spirit than I've ever seen on the ball club. Everybody wants to hit a thousand. Everybody wants to feel a thousand. Everybody wants to win every game. But this is impossible, and I, that's why I think baseball is such a great game, because the, the competitive spirit has to be inside of you. You have 162 games to play. It's tough to get up for every game, but you have to feel it. The competitiveness from within is very important and uh, it has to come out on you as much as possible in order for you to have a winning season. Expansion team, yes. But grim Gene Mock is determined that they will not be bush leaguers. Mock has been around long enough to know that if you want to mix with the bigs, you've got to play like the bigs, even if you finish last. Baseball is so much a, a game of conditioning. Uh, it's, it's uh, unique in that uh, we play 162 games a year, where the, most of the other major sports play uh, perhaps half of that or even less. Uh, the football players play 12 or 15 games a year, and they have to be conditioned uh, physically to contact uh, both with uh, the opposition and with the ground. We try to avoid uh, contact uh, in practice with one another and uh, with, even with the ground. We don't even do much sliding practice because the majority of players that come to the major league camp already know about sliding and they've been taught this as youngsters and uh, once you learn it's like riding a bicycle once you learn how to slide you never forget how to do it our ball players uh, like all major league ball players just uh, repeat and repeat over and over all the things that they have to do in baseball so it becomes second nature to them Sometimes you, you, you lay awake at night and you wonder if, uh, if you're really going to make it or not. Uh, you look at all the major league ball players and you see the 20-game winners and you see all the ball players is hitting 300 and, and you wonder as a pitcher if you can get out Mickey Mantle, if you can get out Willie Mays. Uh, these are some of the things that goes through uh, young ball players' minds. Uh, I was scared that first day, I tell you, guys are up there that we're hitting major league ball, and here I was, and I didn't know if <laughs> I didn't know if I could throw as hard as I could and still get them out. You know, I I have nothing to compare myself, and, and then, then then word gets out that we're having an inter squad game, and this really this is I'm done for now. <laughs> I'm just turning me over, and I said, well, I'll, I hope I don't throw that first day, so I can see what somebody else throws like, you know, because my right now I'm trying to compare myself and see where I stand. And, well, luckily, I wasn't slated to throw on that first night, so this was on a, on a Sunday, I guess. So Saturday night, I figured, well, I'll watch all day tomorrow and pick up a few pointers. And, and sure enough, uh, after the game Sunday, they said, there's another game tomorrow, and those guys who aren't throwing, throw tomorrow. And that, and that, that was me. So last night, uh, uh, I thought about my pitching, and I concentrated, and I want to remember the signs, and I got plenty of rest, and I didn't do anything. That, Really set me up, and this morning I woke up and it's raining. And now I'm right back to where I started because now I gotta go through the whole thing again tomorrow. Ah, oh, there will be many days like that. Sometimes the ball players can't be blamed if they wonder whether anybody upstairs really cares. That's how it went in year one for the Montreal Expo. In this, the 100th anniversary of professional baseball. Those were the hopes, the fears, the joys, the agonies, the successes, the failures, and all the other consequences and responsibilities of big league competition. But whatever their fortunes may be in the National League, one fact remains certain. Canada has a Major League Baseball team, a Montreal Expo.
we're going to come up there and we, we, we're going to give you the best that we have. If sometimes we might disappoint you, it's not because we, we, we are, we, we are thinking about offending you. It's just that uh, we want to do well so bad is that uh, uh, we are, I guess we are going to make mistakes. Uh, uh, I guess we'll do that too. But you stick with us and, and I, I think we're going to be okay.